Now we're rounding out some of these Copilot Plus PCs that we've gotten into the studio the last week or so. We looked at the Surface Pro 11, the Laptop 7 from Microsoft in that Surface line. We looked at the Yoga Slim 7X. We also looked at the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge. And now we have the Asus VivoBook S15. This one's a little bit different. It's a 15.6 inch OLED display here. Absolutely gorgeous, 3K resolution, 120 hertz refresh rate. And it also has a numpad. This is something that the others don't have. It also has a pretty nice port selection, an all metal build, premium in every sense of the word. And we don't normally associate that with Vivo books, but this sort of bucks the trend. I'm very impressed with this laptop in terms of the performance, both single and multi-core performance, as well as pretty nice battery life. We're gonna get into it in more in this first look review. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Asus VivoBook S15 running the brand new Snapdragon X Elite processor, brand new for 2024, coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by ASUS. I'm not being sponsored by ASUS. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. ASUS is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit is provided by ASUS, and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. The VivoBook S15, the S5507 to be specific, comes in at $1299.99. And of course, for those interested, I'll drop a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. All right, pretty nice packaging. You know, it's not the most fancy packaging, but Nice fancy laptop, very nice. Wow, all metal, I can feel the coolness of it. We have our charger that we've seen before. This is a 90 watt charger. So this is the first one we've seen with the higher wattage charger. It's also USB type C as well as a power cord. And this is the unit itself. And I gotta tell you, it looks pretty good. So this is that silver, pretty nice. Let me see if there's any give or flex. Sometimes with the Vivo book line, you gotta be careful, but this seems pretty solid actually. And very well weighted here. Yeah, seems pretty good. Not too much flex in the keyboard. Nice, very nice build. Goes back 180 degrees. All right, glossy display. There is a kill switch for the webcam. All right, for Ace. all right, this is OLED. Take a look at this keyboard. It has the numpad. I know William, you're not gonna like this one. I think it's too condensed for you, right? Pretty nice. Diving board style touchpad. Harman Kardon, Dolby Atmos. Good feeling keyboard. So just the unit alone, you're looking at 1.429 kilograms. And with the power charger and say the US power cord, let's see what that is. 1.796 kilograms and that is three pounds, 15.4 ounces. So just a shade under four pounds. And if you're in the European plug, I don't think it's gonna matter. Maybe it's a little bit more heavier. One, uh, four pounds, 0 0.2 ounces. And that of course is uh, 1.819 kilograms. So that is the total travel weight, depending on which country you're going to. Okay, let's check out the port selection. Let's start off on the left side. We get an HDMI 2.1 port and you get two USB Type-C ports. They're both USB-C 4.0 ports and they are full function, supporting data, charge, and display out. Now next to that is a micro SD card reader and a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. And moving over to the right side are two USB type A ports. Now, I love the fact that you get legacy ports, you get modern ports here. And I would say all in all, this is probably one of the best port selections when it comes to these Windows Copilot Plus PCs that we just saw in the initial batch here. And I would say the only thing I would change maybe is put a full size SD card reader as opposed to the micro SD card reader. But all in all, I would say this is a very good port selection. Okay, now when it comes to the memory, you're looking at 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5X memory running at that very fast 8,500 mega transfers per second, and it is running in dual channel mode. Now, of course, like most laptops nowadays, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user, but 
because it is soldered in, you're getting that very fast RAM as you see here. But I would like to see a 32 gigabyte option if possible, but right now it seems like there's only one SKU here and that's 16 gigabytes of memory. And for most people, that's certainly more than enough, more than adequate. Now, as far as the SSD, good news here, the SSD is user upgradable. And as you can see from the reads and writes, I would say they're decent. They're certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. And unlike the Galaxy Book 4 Edge from Samsung that we just took a look at, if you need more storage down the road, here you have the option to upgrade it yourself. Now, when it comes to the wireless, you're looking at Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4, and that combo card is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user, but because it is Wi-Fi 7, it's a bit more future-proof than, say, Wi-Fi 6E, obviously. And as far as that, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth both working flawlessly, no issues with either one. Okay, let's talk about the display, and it's a pretty good one, folks, here. It's an OLED display, and Asus has been really killing it with these displays. OLED pretty much throughout their lines here, and I would say 15.6 inches here, 16 to 9 aspect ratio, a bit of a throwback, and especially for those that like to watch and consume media, not have the black bars, this is going to be ideal for you. For gaming, certain games, of course, this is going to be ideal, but for productivity, I think I prefer 16 to 10, like most laptops nowadays, and I have to to admit it's a bit refreshing using a 16 to 9 and not having those black bars but again the norm here is going to be 16 to 10 let's be clear now as far as the display itself just looking at it the blacks are really deep the contrast is excellent colors are really vibrant and they just seem to pop and that's all the hallmarks of an OLED display they're here now I don't have a colorimeter yet I did order one that supposedly works with Windows on ARM so I'll be able to bring you the metrics very soon but suffice it to say just looking at it and using it for the past three or four days it has been pretty excellent now especially consuming media now it has a peak brightness of 600 nits when consuming hdr content 500 nits or so when you're just watching standard dynamic range so it's certainly bright enough now it is a glossy display so you'll notice some glare and reflection depending on your lighting condition not too bad i've seen worse but just keep that in mind you will have to contend with that glare and i would say the fact that it's not a Touchscreen makes it a bit lighter, this laptop, and that's good. So again, you don't get touch on this, but having this non-touch OLED display is perfect for consuming media, perfect for playing games. If you can get the games working, we'll talk about that soon. And I would say overall, an excellent media consumption display here. There's no doubt about it. And by the way, you can put the screen back 180 degrees, so you can pretty much play with it and get the perfect viewing angle each and every time. I like that. Now, it also has a very high refresh rate, 120 hertz. So that's going to give you that very smooth, very fluid experience. And so far, this display has been excellent. It also has a 0.2 millisecond response time. So if you are going to get some games to work, you will get the benefit of that. So this is the camera on the Asus VivoBook S15, the Copilot Plus PC, brand new here for 2024, running the Snapdragon X Elite. And this is a 1080p camera. It's a uh, IR camera. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. It worked pretty well so far. Uh, it also has the NPU, of course. That's going to handle all the AI or studio effects that we have here. And with that, we're getting some new things here. We get the portrait light. Uh, I'm not really sure. Like I said, I'm not really sure what that does. Background, we know the standard blur, portrait, portrait blur. You get the eye contact. You get all that crap. Uh, creative filters, illustrated, watercolor, animated. I don't really care about these, but just something new, I guess. Um, what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comment section below. You could do the auto framing and all that stuff. So all the bells and whistles are here. What do you think about this 1080p camera? I am curious to know. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, this is running the Snapdragon X Elite. Now, there are four different variations of that. We have the X1E 78100, which uh, can go up to 3.4 gigahertz, but it doesn't have a dual core boost as you'd get on some of the other variants above this one. Uh, of course, the Snapdragon X Plus is below this, uh, but we're going to concentrate on this one. And as you can see in the Cinebench 2024, single core performance CPU 107, which is actually quite good when you compare it to others in the category. Category. And then, of course, Cinebench 2024 multi-core score, very good, 1,039. So we're seeing very good performance, despite it not being the top flight X1 Elite processor. There are ones above that. And, of course, this 78100 is actually doing pretty good.
Now, one of the things I was very curious to see is the performance when on battery versus plugged in. And as you can see, the single core is very similar either on battery or plugged in. So there was not much of a difference there. But there was a difference between on battery and plugged in with the multi-core performance. On battery, I only got 7708, but when plugged in, got 12,728. So there is a difference there when it comes to multi-core performance. And it's really working very well for things like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, everything fast, snappy, very fluid. The There is no hiccups there. There, This is where this is going to shine, doing those kind of things. And I got to tell you, it's running cool and quiet. The fans basically do not come on when you're doing everyday tasks. The only time you'll hear the fans is when you put it in uh, performance mode, doing uh, really CPU intensive stuff or putting it under heavy load, like gaming or something like that you might hear the fans but for the most part this is running silent and really cool so that's been really good one of the things i'm really liking out of this arm based snapdragon processor and that is one of the things we've been wanting for a very long time on windows laptops again when we open the laptop we, we don't want to hear a jet airplane taking off that's what the experience has been a lot of times on these intel based units or even the amd based units and now we have something that can rival say a macbook air which is pretty well it's silent of course it is passively cooled here we do have active fans but they only come on when needed not unnecessarily and that's a good thing now, if you stick to the everyday task to keep it simple, you're going to have a very good experience. Where you're going to run into some trouble is with the graphics. Now, the Adreno graphics, that integrated solution they're using here, is, is actually pretty good when it works right. In other words, uh, it's been hit or miss when it comes to things like gaming or 4K, video editing, and DaVinci Resolve. Now, there is an ARM-based beta version of DaVinci Resolve, and that's the DaVinci Resolve 19. And I was able to render a video, 4K video, but it wasn't the most smooth experience. There were some bugs there. So I would say if you're looking to do heavy gaming on this or if you're doing very intensive 4K video editing, I would hold off till they fix some of this and work out some of the kinks down the road. So I do think that they're going to fix all that. It's just a matter of time. Right now, again, like I've said many times prior to this, it's early days. Things are going to get better. But right now, don't use this as your daily driver. As a secondary laptop, yes, this can certainly do the job, especially if you keep it light in terms of what you're doing with it. Just stick to the basic tasks and you're going to have some very good experience. It's where you try to do things that it's just not optimized for yet. That's where you're going to run into some trouble. So just keep that in mind. And to illustrate my point on the thermals, it stayed very cool here where you place your fingers on the keyboard never getting overly hot. And this is where I'm running it under maximum load. So things are going full force here and never getting overly hot. Now, the only hot spot I did notice was where the plug is. It got around 55 degrees Celsius. That's the anomaly here. Everywhere else, it remained cool. So that's pretty interesting. And like I said, in everyday tests, the fans do not kick in. Very rarely do you hear them. And when they do, under maximum load, as you see here, never going above 40, maybe 41 decibels at most. That's pretty quiet. All right, so let's talk battery life. And I ran the same exact test I've been running on all these Copilot Plus PCs. I streamed or looped a 4K video via YouTube, via Wi-Fi, of course. And I started at 100%, put it in the balance mode, and let it run, let it rip, let it loop until it went to zero. And here it did 11 hours and 19 minutes. Not quite as good as some of the others we looked at. And I think it has to do with the OLED display here, but I'm not really sure what's going on. But still, the fact that we're getting 11, almost 11, 11 hours and 20 minutes is pretty amazing considering where we were with the Intel based or the AMD based units. This is a lot better. And consider if we ran a local video playback, we would see even better battery life. So I would say this is pretty impressive overall. And a couple of things to note about the battery life. I did run it with 40% screen brightness, and it is in the balance mode, as I mentioned. And just to keep this in mind, everybody's use case is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. So just please keep that in mind. Now, the Asus VivoBook S15 here has Harman Kardon tuned speakers. It has Dolby Atmos. That's going to help with the spatial audio. I thought the overall volume was good, decent bass, good mids. I think the overall sound filled up the room rather nicely. Now, let's give it a listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Asus Vivo Book S15 here for 2024, running that brand new Snapdragon X Elite? And I got to tell you, I'm very impressed here. I like the gorgeous 15.6 inch 3K OLED display, 120 hertz refresh rate, 600 nits of peak brightness. You got to like it. Now, it's good single, multi core performance, runs cool and quiet, and it has a premium build and design. I like its comfortable keyboard and touchpad, and I love the all day battery life that this will give you. Now, the negatives here, the Adreno graphics, I don't think, in my opinion, are as good as the Intel Arc graphics or the Radeon 780M from AMD. x86 apps have been pretty much hit or miss so far. Gaming has been pretty much hit or miss so far, so it just depends which title. Some driver issues for older peripherals like printers and so forth may give you some issues. Missing some AI features at launch, notably the recall feature that everybody was anticipating. That's going to be coming soon, though. 16 to 9 aspect ratio may turn some of you off, although it is very good for watching movies. No black bars on the top and the bottom. And the trackpad could be haptic, but again, I'm not going to dig them too hard on that. And there is no touchscreen option here, but I would say those are not deal breakers. It's early days here, of course, with the Snapdragon PC the Copilot Plus PCs, and I would say very good for very simple things like Microsoft Office, email, web browsing. Keeping it simple, you will have a very good experience. It's where you try to use these highly specialized apps, or you try to do 4K video editing, you try to do some heavy gaming, depending on the title, you're going to run into some issues. But I think those will eventually get all worked out. So I'm very impressed with the Asus VivoBook S15 OLED, and I think it's only going to get better as time goes on. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. And don't forget to check out my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.